Welcome guys to season two and now goes in 10. Right now I am working um, very nicely at Dell, finished off my master's in Northeastern. I'm working on some more advanced topics now, starting off with the uh, neural nets. That's right, neural networks. I know neural networks can be a scary thing to learn about with all these, you know, the brain stuff, the input output activation function and everything. And believe me, when I took data mining, uh, neural nets was like my Achilles heel. I had no idea how to calculate backprop. It's just a bunch of, bunch of crazy arrows and uh, circles. However, I will make things fun today, as always at Algos in 10, with a little bit of a DP damage programming review. Feed to my man, Trading Gaming. I loved your um, NBA 2K um, channel. Very, very, very nice. And of course, the summer blockbuster movie coming out this summer, Space Jam 2, A New Legacy with LeBron James. That'll be the main theme of today's episode, Algos in 10. So today's episode is basically sponsored by that uh, Space Jam 2, A New Legacy. Catch out in theaters in uh, July 16th or on HBO if you are willing to um, watch it from home. With that being said, let's begin August 10, Season 2, uh, Neural Networks Applications. And I'll begin sharing my screen for that portion. So this August 10, Season 2 is a little different than Season 1 in that Season two basically starts off with like a bit of a slide because I noticed from season one, like I keep moving the camera too much with the board, which is a little bit um, distracting. And as I learned from my Myers-Briggs personality test, I am an ESFJ, which means I want to simply make things more logical. So it may sound really very school-like, very, you know, lecture-like, but it makes things organized. So here we go, boys and girls. Here we go. So yeah, this is Algos in 10, season two, episode one. Yep, so here we go. LeBron Space Jam, a new legacy tribute. It's sponsored by Space Jam. Yep, with LeBron James, Don Cheadle, and you know, the good old Looney Tunes. And it'll be out in theaters July 16th, or as I mentioned, in HBO stream as well. And to annotate this a little bit, I'm also going to do the following. This is very important. All rights reserved to Warner Bros. 2021. So I can, so this is just a disclaimer. All this stuff about Space Jam is not actually from the movie. So no movie spoilers. And also, as I learned um, the hard way before, to not share spoilers, thanks to Rick and Morty season five, um, which has actually been now just released, by the way. I'm not going to share anything about the plot of the movie, but rather an application of data science and algorithms in the movie. Just FYI, dis FYI disclaimer. So with that being said, let's move on. So the topics for this episode. Oh no, damn it, programming. Always a fun topic. Review. Then the problem statement and background, intro to neural nets, without getting too much into lecture, but more application, backprop, backpropagation, whiteboard solution, which means I finally bring out my uh, trusty whiteboard for part of, part of the episode. So it was not gonna be just me drawing everything on a whiteboard anymore. It's gonna be me showing the background first and then solving stuff. Cause I noticed from season one, based on background I received from, from some of the ratings and Facebook reviews, a lot of people say that they were not able to see what's written on the one, one on the whiteboard. So I decided to change it up and you know, first show the solution, first show the background and the problem statement, and then just simply on only the whiteboard and nothing else, show the solution. And because I want to show I really am a CS person, I'm going to ask have a preview of the coding, the TensorFlow library for part two, which will be happening two weeks from now. So I'm gonna make episodes bi-weekly due to Dell working structure. So quick review, dun, 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 dun. What are the steps to diamond programming? And I'll give you guys some time to think about this. A countdown. Time is up, so time's up.
And here we go. You have English description of subproblem, the subproblem description, number of subproblems, Bellman equation with usually some base cases and recursion, final runtime and final solution. Diamond programming is a tricky topic. So if you don't remember how it works, go on to Leet code if you want to code it out or read um, CLRS or read even Gail Lackman McDowell CTCI or read, meet up my boy Tushar Roy and see his awesome algorithms episode. It'll be in the description. So here's the problem background, feet Space Jam. It's return of the Space Jam. This time featuring LeBron James. LeBron has fallen into the Toon world and wants to save his son, Bronny. I'm mean, going save his son, not Bronny, that son from the Goon Squad. LeBron only knows basketball and doesn't have any CS or DS background. So he picks you from the first pick of Algos and 10 season one viewers. The Toon Squad selects you. This is like my Adam Silver drafting voice. He wants to find the most optimal lineup versus the Goon Squad by three ways. Diamond programming with NBA 2K My Team Packs, which is fancy words for saying basically NBA 2K currency, the good old neural net, and back propagation with the weight least weighted input output neural net nodes. That's a bunch of gibberish, but here's a little Troiden game. So problem one, diamond programming review feat Troiden. Ron wants to first get some NBA 2K packs for his matchup. So given a series of packs, uh, P1 to Pn with some boosters, which means you earn an MT coin for each green pack, some deniers, which means you lose MT coin for each red pack. You give it 50 MT to begin the selection process. Troiden is a pretty cheap type of guy and only allows it up to K selections. So using diamond programming, which is similar to a, a, a game called Banken's Mile, like jumping up, down, left, right, and squares, and a jumpy squares problem, find the following. What is the maximum Braun can choose for NBA 2K packs such that he has K less than equal to N selections left and doesn't lose out all of his MT coins? So you know, NBA 2K, if you lose all your coins, your account gets shut down and you don't get to go for Galaxy Opals or bragging rights. So to now really, um, really use the awesomeness of Zoom, I'm going to actually annotate my solution right over here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, there we go. Going to draw a nice big box and write some text. So what is the um, English description of subproblem? Um, find the maximum amount of MT coins LeBron can choose from Packs P1. I'm not going to use a uh, sub abbreviation because that's too difficult on Zoom. Uh, Brian can choose some packs P1 to Pn with um, up to K less than N selections. So that's your English description. Very simple, very clear. ELI, ELI5, like it's in Reddit. Um, ex explain like I'm five. That's your English description. So now I'm going to just uh, GG um, this portion. Um, oh, don't worry, I will show the entire solution in the description on YouTube. So if you guys miss anything, I'll, I'll basically summarize it in the description. So these are gone. All right, S step number two, which is a little more complicated. English description of the subproblem. So you need something to define a subproblem. Since you know I'm talking about LeBron, I'm gonna choose Braun and three parameters. The boosters, the deniers, and the index of jumping. So this represents the maximum amount of MT packs that LeBron can choose given B boosters, D deniers, and up to I less than equal to K amount of choices. So this is also another form of diamond programming solution in that you have a maximizing um, solution. You have a maximizing solution here. So I'll make it a little bigger, easier for you guys to see. So it's Braun B, D, and I equals the maximum amount of empty packs that LeBron can choose given B boosters, 
D denier is empty of I less than equal to K amount of choices. So now we get to the third step. And just to keep track, I will write on my board what's going on so I don't actually you know, mess up my own personal problem. So just to keep track of things, I'm going to write stuff on my board. So I'm still gonna use the whiteboard in algos and Tem, but not as much as before to avoid confusion for the viewer. Oh, by the way, I made my uh, nice little eraser. Uh, I was not and approved. So I actually made a little bit of a <laughs> sticky note to remind myself um, this is season two, not season one. All right, guys and girls, step three now, which is of course to go to Bellman. This, I'm going to add a little bit more space. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to make a bigger text box, a bigger draw box, um, hopefully not covering the entire thing. So I'm gonna move everything down here. And I'm actually gonna move my zoom screen up here. Sorry, you can move my zoom screen up a little bit so I have enough, enough space to annotate because this is gonna be a bit of a longer solution. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move everything down here for the uh, Bellman equation. So here we go, the Bellman equation. All right, base case, very simple. If, um, B, if LeBron basically gets super lucky and gets basically no deniers and B is less than equal to K, they obviously would choose the, the maximum. It basically then just only choose one particular uh, pack because it basically has no deniers and only boosters. You can only choose one pack. The really crappy case is if he basically is getting like basically denied every single time. So D is less than equal to K and B is zero. He is basically out of luck. He has no choices. And if D and, and B are basically not even like choices anymore, then LeBron's also out of choices because you can't choose negative packs. That makes no sense either in algorithms or in 2K. And whoops, that is not what I intended to do. Um, yeah, so basically put LeBron had no real choices in terms of packs if you have like less than zero. Excellent, so that's the easy part. Those are my base cases. One little tricky thing. We're assuming that these packs can't actually be split. They have to be integer, at least zero. So natural numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, up to like K. So if you have any doubts with regards to dynamic programming, always clarify what the input is actually being in, in the problem set. Because if you do not do that, the interview or, or really any type of damn programming situation, whether it be on a test, interview, leak code, whatever, you'll, you'll get into wrong situation in regards to edge cases when you're testing your solution. So make sure you always clarify the input and the output for every problem. All right, let me now uh, yeet to these two and now get to the second part of Bellman, which is just the old good old equation. So now the equation itself, we have our old original um, equation, Braun, BDI. So this is sort of like knapsack, right? LeBron can choose yes or no for per booster and denier. So we could choose the maximum of either LeBron choosing the uh, booster, which means B, D, and zero, which means he doesn't have any more choices 
or you could choose the maximum LeBron not choosing the booster, which you know has one choice, B, D, and one, or there's another situation. Because LeBron can also jump squares, like, you know, jump, jump, some sort of, some sort of packs, you can also then choose brawn of, for example, B plus I, D minus I up to, up to K. And then of course you have to define what K is, which is the maximum amount of choices allowed for 2K. MB 2K packs. So that is your Bellman equation. It looks like a lot, but let me um, make it look a little nicer with, with uh, making it bigger. So it's basically a three-way um, knapsack problem, essentially, the solution. So you either have LeBron choosing all the boosters, all the deniers, or based on each index of the boosters and deniers, he's going to choose the maximum amount of NBA 2K packs. So yeah, that is your equation. I'm gonna leave it there because it is very important to go through. This is a special form of knapsack in that you have another choice. You can literally jump in between um, indices because usually knapsack is choose or not choose, right? So in this solution, this is actually gonna give you a bit of a third choice, which is not normally happen in knapsack, but it's a good choice to have in that you can actually literally jump between items in knapsack. Cause you know, when you play NBA 2K, you can choose between packs and as Troyden showed in his um, videos and YouTube, you can always choose between packs. This is the same thing. You can always choose between packs and then get your galaxy opal. Or if you don't want to use MB 2K, you could just simply choose as a very simple jumping, jumping jack game. Like, you know, in jumping jacks, people either can jump one square or two square or in hopscotch, you could jump between one square, or two square, right? When you play hopscotch, you always want to get to the final square, the fastest. So this is almost like a hopscotch. Like you're basically trying to hopscotch your way to maximum. If that still does not make any sense, you think I'm basically talking about LeBron and gibberish, please check out the related lead code problem. Um, it's counting steps. That's right. The lead code problem is super simple, but there are some tricks to it. So that is your equation for the diamond programming, which is super simple, but not so simple if you don't understand DP that well. All right, number of sub problems. This is pretty straightforward. You have up to K choices. You have up, no, you have up to K packs, um, K selections. So that's the number of sub problems up to K times. All right, number of uh, runtime for recursion. So you're basically choosing between packs, yes or no, is essentially linear search. So ON, so total runtime is going to be ONK. But very, very fast. It's like basically optimized like quick sort. It's very fast. And the final solution is pretty simple. You just choose um, brawn of the the most of the of the most of the boosters and deniers and then K up to the K selection. So that's it. That's the damage programming solution for um, this part A, which is pretty nice to have. There is a way to optimize this. If you guys know the um, data structure of a TRIE, a TRI data structure, which I will write down right here, a TRI data structure. So what, what TRI would do, it would basically lexicographically, lexic, uh, I don't know, order the um, packs based on their selection priority. So lexicographically, they'll choose like, for example, pack um, A, B, C, D, F, G. They could like literally order the packs in, in a very interesting way. We'll get to more of that later because that's where it gets into a bit closer to network, neural networks. They have an order of inputs and an order of outputs to get like basically a hidden neural network solution. So yeah, that is it for part one of this episode. Is learning what is the tri data structure what is used for a very simplistic and fairly um, general review of damage programming without anything too crazy. It's just basically choosing yes or no packs like you play an NBA 2K or you play like hopscotch or whatever. And of course you now know how Troyden is and how LeBron plays, picks his teams for the NBA. So moving on, I'm gonna end annotation as well here. So moving on, now we have the neural nets. So it's time to go a little old school. And since I went to Boston University with the BU AI throwback, review of neural nets. 
So if you don't remember what a back, back propagation, which is basically counting the passive neural nets and perceptron is, you're gonna need it because that is very important. So if you guys don't know what neural nets are at all, like what even is a neural net, please look over geeksforgeeks.org website. So now the problem is gonna be pretty simple. Apply the perceptron formula to each of the boosters and deniers of MB2K pack. For reference, the formula is as follows. H of X equals a sign, which is a positive one or negative one of the sum of W I X I minus threshold. So what does that mean? Well, I'm gonna annotate it again and show you guys a great um, picture. Let's say for example, I have just two neural nets here, um, two squares, an output node and input node. Part of my squares, they're not very, very square, but they, they, get, they get the job done. Oh, this is much nicer. All right. And let's say, for example, you have two paths, which are pretty straightforward. You have either one path going left, one path going right, one path going left, one path going right. Quick trivia question. Is this a complete graph or not? It is not a complete graph because you don't have a path going between here and here. That is correct. So regards to these two paths, you have an input and an output. So let me just label these, input and output. Yeah, so that's it. So let's say, for example, we can apply to every single pack that uh, we had in an early demo programming question. So since this is gonna be a little, a little bit of algebra, basically. So let's say, for example, we have B boosters they are positive. And B minus, I don't know, I boosters, they're negative. And if D deniers, they are positive. And D minus J deniers, they are negative. So let's do a quick little algebra review. When you have B plus B minus I is 2B minus I, and D plus DJ, D minus J is 2D minus J, correct? you have to be very careful with what I and J are. I and J are not the indices of each booster or denier, it's the amount. And that's where threshold begins. To keep it super simple for this neural network, our threshold is gonna be very simple. Our threshold T is gonna be 0.5, either yes or no. It's basically a binary tree decision tree. So I'm going to now delete this little picture of the neural net because I need some space for math. Hopefully you understand how neural nets work now. It's basically, you're given an input, you have to give some paths in terms of um, perceptrons. So if like your brain, like, you know, seeing a picture of Jason and seeing, oh, this guy has a black shirt, has a bookshelf and has glasses. And thinking about black shirt, bookshelf, glasses, who this Jason person is gonna be. It's not like David or Frank or Charlie, it's, it's Jason. That's an example of neural net. It's basically be able to classify what you're given based on a perceptron. So now some mathy stuff. So you wanna find H of X, right? And that is either a positive of W I X I. So for now, make things simple. It's going to be one for each weight. So B, plus one times B minus J, plus one times D, plus one times B minus J. As you can see, I'm a bit of a newbie with Zoom annotations, which is of course I just mentioned, two B minus I plus two D minus J, which is gonna be something you can also do from algebra is you can, you know, factor stuff out to B to quote unquote B plus D minus I minus J. And this whole thing is going to be subtracted by 0.5. Now you're wondering, Jason, what is all this gibberish? Why are you still writing numbers that don't make any sense? You'll see why I'm doing that in a minute. You also will notice that this thing is positive negative, right? So you have to also consider the negative of this. I'm going to actually just copy this whole thing and make it negative. Copy that. Is here negative. So what does that mean in terms of the neural network? 
it means very simply half of decisions of the boosters are going to be positive. Half of decisions of deniers are going to be negative. So this whole entire thing is essentially a 50-50 situation. So 50% probability that LeBron will choose something positive and 50% something that LeBron choose something negative. I wish NBA 2K was that fair. I'd be getting Galaxy Opals every single day, <laughs> but it's not. So here's the reason why, in part three. So make sure you guys got this math down and understand the basic algebra because you're gonna need it even more when you actually apply real numbers to the back propagation formula. It's, it's a little bit more mathy than I wanted it to be, but neural nets is machine learning and machine learning is math with some cool coding. So it's all about learning. So here's a little uh, blast of past, a little warm up from neural networks. You wanna compute the total back propagation for the following neural network. Uh, you wanna compute for this, in, this, this picture, which I low key just copy, um, low key just screenshot, copy pasted with attribution from good old Google, um, the total back propagation. So to do that, we need to do the following. We are given, luckily for us, we're given the weights. So let's find, for example, the paths we can take for the neural net. So what's path one? Uh, W11 to W13, right? And that is just simply 0.6 plus 0.8 equals 1.4. Path two, W21, I'm mean, sorry, W12 to W13. And that would be uh, 0.7 plus point, uh, 0.7 plus, sorry, W12 to W23, 0.7 plus 0.3, which is 1.0. Path number three, you got pretty simply here. And because these paths are getting longer, I'm gonna have to change the font a little bit or move some stuff up. So I'm gonna have to add a little more space to the text here because it is getting a little big. So here we go. I'm gonna first do this and do that. Ah, there we go. The power of Zoom guys and girls. <laughs> Zoom is very interesting to, to use. So you have W of 2.2 to W of 2.3, which is probably the most straightforward um, path, at least perception wise, which is gonna be just 0.7. And then finally, sorry, this is not something we need to deal with, which is 0.3 plus 0.4, sorry, 0.4 plus 0.3, which is 0.7. And then finally, P4, which is this path, um, W21 plus, oh, sorry, W21 connected to W13, which is uh, 0.5 plus 0.8, which is 1.3. So your grand total for total backprop is just adding them all up. So you have 2.4 plus 2.0, which is 4.4. That's your grand total for the backpropagation. So very simple math, but this is under the assumption that every weight is one. If every weight is not one, this is where it gets a little bit hairy with them, you know, deltas and partial derivatives and that crazy calculus stuff. For more information on that, also check the Geeks for Geeks um, website. Okay, so now we have the actual part C. Um, I'm gonna put my screen here for now. Okay, so we have to now compute the total score of Perceptron given the following weights from the, loot, from the Toon Squad starting lineup. And this is not everybody from LeBron's Toon Squad, it's just the starters and important, you know, Looney Tune characters like LeBron, of course, um, Bugs Bunny, Lola Bunny, Daffy Duck, Tweety Bird, Yosemite Sam, and of course, good old grandma. So I'll give everybody two minutes to uh, solve this. Well, I'll solve it on my own personal board and we'll share the solution uh, momentarily. Oh, and by the way, 
to clarify something. Once again, for this back prop, all weights are one. All weights are 0.5, just to clarify the back prop. You can use a calculator for this as well. So did you guys get 51.5 as your solution? You should, because that is the answer. Oops, sorry. That is the answer. 51.5 is the solution. You basically want to sum all of the weights times 0.5 by using the back propagation formula. And I'm wondering, Jason, why is there no negative part? Because the weights are all positive. If there's any negative weight, we get the negative part. <clears throat> So yeah, that is how we solve part C, which is the galaxy opal perceptron calculation. Perceptron just a fancy way of saying, um, how do you want to determine what path you choose? Or like how to determine the total weight of the neural network. And by the way, I'm not an expert in neural network, it's just an example of like showing how neural nets can be applied to graphs and diamond programming and algos. It's meant to be a bit of a, tight coupling of algorithms in data science. And finally, part D, which is the thing I'm actually coding for part two. Save Don Cheadle's main man and LeBron's son now by solving the remaining problem. Show your work with the ANN, with ANN neural network backpropagation diagram, which means I basically have to draw a backprop diagram for you guys. And the remaining problem is apply backprop with the least weighted input output neural net nodes to find the most optimal lineup starting lineup for LeBron James Toon Squad, where n equals one to t, where one is LeBron James and t is the final member of the Toon Squad. Of course, assume no pre-injuries, uh, no, assume no injuries pre-game. So I'll give you guys a minute to draw the uh, ANN neural net backpropagation. Because there's like almost t amount of players, we're not gonna solve it. We're just gonna draw the solution. In part two, with actual computer help and Python programming and good stuff from um, Jupyter Notebook, we will solve this. We're not gonna do everything by hand. Sometimes it gets so complex that you have to use a computer. So let me start this thing slow because it is quite involved, this solution. So the first thing I would notice for drawing any neural net is to get the input and the output. That's the first thing I would notice. The second thing I'd notice is what is your hidden input, which is of course the lineup squad, the tune squad members. So I'm going to, um, erase that, I'm just gonna copy these instead because I like to make, my, make this actually as close to perfect as possible. I can't do copy paste, huh? Okay, plan B. Whoops, a mouse. Oh, I see. All right, I'm just gonna do the old fashioned way. <laughs> Bear with me with the pictures. It's not perfect, but it's better than like drawing down a board. All right, so these are, these are your, um, these are basically your inputs of one to, um, you know, two to T basically. So these are your teammates of LeBron's um, Space Jam 
basically. These are your so-called teammates. But you're missing another layer. This is where the problem gets a little more complicated. Because LeBron can or not, or can or cannot select the um, player, he's going to have to do a little bit of cutting, which as of course you played in basketball or any sports team, being cut is not fun. But he can only have up to two people in the starting lineup. So he's gonna to have to do some cutting here, cutting people from the team. So to represent a cut, I'm going to use actually a full circle to make things a little more interesting. So if the full circle is considered red in color, sorry, if it's considered red in color, what, sorry, uh, red in color, or whatever, if it's considered red in color, I'm just gonna use R here. That means that the player is gonna get cut. If it's green in color, then the player is not gonna get cut. And I finally have the output. So that's the easy part. The hard part is putting the remaining arrows in the um, artificial neural net network. So that is gonna require some arrows. So first part is pretty easy. You put, oh, there's the red now. I'm a Zoom newbie, um, despite in, in this pandemic for almost a year and a half. The red arrows is basically where you want to begin. And then the red arrow here is basically anybody could be cut or anybody could be, you know, put in the team. And remember, all the weights are 0.5. So you want to find basically the min of this. So here's where the fun really begins. It's a bit later in Algos and 10 from episode two, which is actually going to be the oh, a week away. Um, you know, the um, recent Bailey Madison and um, Kevin Quinn um, Netflix uh, popular series, Netflix popular movie, A Week Away, where we begin talking about something called the min cut max flow. But for this problem, we basically want to use the artificial neural net to find the minimum cut. And from this diagram, we don't know what the weights are, but the weights are just 0.5 each. So you want to find path one, which is pretty simple. The weights are going to be just 0.5 times three, which is just 1.5. Path two, it's not so good. It's just going to be 0.5. You could tell why you need a computer for this. Eventually you're gonna find that path n is the minimum cut. You get zero. Do you know why you get zero? Because all the other paths are, are done. So you wanna do path n minus one, which is 0.5 again. So for this problem set, you want to basically give LeBron the following starting lineup. You want to give LeBron James, I'll use green here. You wanna use LeBron James, the following starting lineup. You wanna do a little slash here. So first two cuts, and then here, these two cuts. So the most optimal starting lineup that LeBron can possibly have is his first two starters and everybody up to the T minus one. So your final solution for this entire um, thing is just gonna simply be this. Apply back prop to ANN for the top two starters, including LeBron, then choosing the minimum, so this is like an algorithm, then choose the minimum remaining weights from up to T minus one starters. So that is your final solution. There's other ways to solve this problem, by the way. Oh, sorry. Um, there's other ways to solve this problem, by the way. You can use, I don't know, um, bipartite graphs, or even if you're crazy enough, you can use a, um, like a Floyd Warshall matrix and other types of graphs. But this is the easiest form of graph possible for neural networks to understand the problem. So this is a really crude solution. The, the part two with the coding will be way easier to understand. It's in Python or if you want to, I can also at least give the pseudocode in Java. So yes, the final solution will be in Python for coding. So we're not done yet. It's been a lot to talk about, but we're not done yet. Um, let me just delete the entire um, image. You can see the image again in the description. Well, actually in a 
PNG file I put into comments. Yep, that's it. So that's it for the solution. And of course, hold up, wrong floors, LeBron says in the movie trailer, we need to solve this live. So the live demo will be, was already shown actually. So never mind. Yeah, it is a flip the switch move from the usual algorithm in 10 because I want to incorporate more Zoom features and less, too much whiteboarding and confusing people in terms of understanding what to write down, what not to write down. So here's a preview of basically uh, <laughs> the coding solution. So I'm gonna use the TensorFlow library in Python and in two weeks you'll find out the solution. It's wicked famous for data science and full-time developers. The algorithm, algorithm I'm gonna use is basically the diamond program I showed earlier, um, some graphs, queues, and arrays, the basics. The difficulty level um, is not too bad. It's not my master's level tough but it's also not first year freshman. It's more, more like basically end of undergrad level tough. And of course, um, the lead code equivalent for funsies is possible, possible by partition. So if you want to do the lead code equivalent of my coding solution, um, you can do that problem. And why we're doing by partition, this is a fancy way of basically saying we're splitting neural nets into two. We're basically saying all the positive partitions are on one side, all the positive negative partitions are the other. So it's sort of like, you know, um, tug of war, one side with uh, negatives, one side with positives. And yep, that is all folks for the algos in 10. And there'll be a live coding, out, live coding solution out for episode two. So this is algos in 10 season two with um, Jason Liu. And of course, watch Space Jam, the trailer. And of course, yes, make sure to subscribe and like. Thank you very much. And that will be it for the end of episode uh, two and I'll go in, uh, sorry, sorry, end of episode one, season two, I'll go in 10. There will be a coding solution live um, two weeks from now. And also if you have any comments or concerns about neural nets or how this season works, uh, please mention in the comments on my socials. Thank you very much.